So Robert F. Kennedy Jr. has all the mojo right now. Why? I'm going to tell you why. I'm also going to tell you everything that you need to know about this guy. And then it might surprise you. If you'll stay with me to the end, I'm going to tell you my stance. Uh, people, people are asking. Y'all have asked approximately a million times for me to respond and let you all know where I stand with this guy. But I'm going to give you the tools that you need tomorrow when you're, because you're a conservative, you go to work in the morning. When you're at work and people are talking about this guy because people are, he's got the mojo, I'm going to arm you, arm you with some info and point you in the right direction, a really easy 20 minutes, and you're going to know what's going on. This one's a mess. Holy smoke. Stay with me. I'll tell you where I stand. So buckle up. Here we go. Today's adventure is brought to you by Smith and Bradley Watches. Not just awesome looking, and my, they are. My favorite one is the Atlantis, the one with the red ring around the outside. They also have a rock solid warranty. Smith & Bradley guarantees it for life, and if anything goes wrong, holler at them and they will fix it. Right down below is a coupon code for 20% off. Go find your favorite one. Check them out. Big thank you for sponsoring today's video. I appreciate it. Smith & Bradley, coupon code down there. You people, Thank you for every thumbs up. Everyone in the You People Army, y'all are awesome. Thank you. If you don't mind double-checking your subscription, that would be rad. Thank you. Robert F. Kennedy Jr., why does he have the mojo? Let me tell you why. First is, well, nostalgia. Uh, the boomers absolutely love Camelot and the Kennedys. Uh, if, if you are not super familiar with that, you know John F. Kennedy, JFK Jr., that was RFK's uncle. When he, RFK Jr., was nine years old, his uncle was assassinated by the CIA, looks like it. And when he was 14, his father, RFK, that would be senior, he was running for DNC presidential bid and was also probably assassinated by the CIA. But they were both killed. Now, you fast forward to 2023, you have a seasoned lawyer, RFK Jr., and he has been a career lawyer and has done some pretty interesting things, but he's got the mojo right now. People are talking about him. He's been on Joe Rogan and people are like, oh my gosh, what do we do with him? The left doesn't know what to do with him. And there's a lot of folks that are constitutionalists like me that don't know exactly what to do with him. I encourage you, here's your homework assignment. Regardless of your feelings on Wikipedia, jump over there. It's a really quick read. There's a lot of resources. You can click them and actually chase the actual uh, primary resource and just spend about 20 minutes in reading and you will be armed tomorrow when you get to work. How do I know you're going to work? Because you're a conservative and you work. Check him out. There are some things I like. I like that one, he's not a dirty old pervert laying in the floor in public. Two, I like that he goes really, he's gone really hard against Monsanto and that's a big deal. Uh, he has uh, sued successfully some major corporations. His stances on the environment in some, some aspects is super interesting. His stances on energy and clean energy and some of this stuff, super interesting. I like it. So there's a lot to like here. The other thing that I really, really like is he is hard, hard anti-vax. And they don't know what to do with it. Here's a great example of them not knowing what to do. His own wife. His own wife is Cheryl Hines. That's the woman with the giant teeth over on Curb Your Enthusiasm. She's got more teeth going on than that Giada lady. I don't know, maybe. I think, probably, I don't know. Question of the day. Who's, who's got more stuff up here? Giada or Cheryl Hines? Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s own wife came out against him on Twitter. It would have been an awkward night at the house. She has since deleted it, but his anti-vax stuff is, is harsh, harsh. And to that makes me want to pound my fist and give him a wind it up. I like it. I do like that. Now, anytime a politician is, and I've just wrote some notes here, anytime I wrote the word dangling carrot, anytime they dangle something during election season, I go, Ew. remember, Obama said he was going to end wars. And as soon as he got elected, he bombed every brown country that he could and then won the Nobel Peace Prize. I don't believe campaigning politicians, especially when they have spent a lifetime over here on my left, and as soon as it's time for election, they start pushing towards the center. I understand why, but it makes me nervous. So I don't really like that. I'm also really nervous when there's a fresh voice, a new voice coming into DC, and we get sucked in and we put our trust into it. Now, I am a single issue voter. 
specifically about the two-way. I believe the two-way covers every covers and protects everything else. For me, mega, mega important. I think as a candidate, RFK Jr. is super interesting. However, he has been very against the two-way for decades. And you can go research that yourself. For the campaign season right now, two things. One, he says, hey, we have a mass shooting problem. And we have one every, a mass shooting every 21 hours. So, but he says that confiscation is not the answer. He says we need to look at the psychotropic medications that we're giving young people. Okay, interesting. I hate that he's just now saying that and didn't say that 30 years ago. I know that was a different problem, but he wasn't super pro-Constitution 30 years ago. So he is saying that. The second thing that I like is he says, but again, it's campaign season, we're dangling. He says that he is against snitch laws, red flag laws. He calls them snitch laws. He's like, I'm not big on snitch laws. So he's anti-confiscation, says we need to look at psychotropic problems, and we also need to look at, or he's also against red flag laws. Now, let me tell you one more thing about this guy that you need to know. He is a statist. He is about authoritarianism, and he is a typical dim. His issue that he cares most about is the environment. He says this, anyone who comes against him that doesn't agree with him, he says he supports free speech, but he says companies that don't agree with him on climate, climate change should be dissolved and put to corporate death. Corporations put to corporate death because they don't agree with this guy on his climate change situation. Yeah, how about that? Oh, does it get worse? Yeah, it does. He says that any, all, all climate deniers should be jailed. At that, I'm out. I'm, I'm out on this guy, 100% out. But I do want to tell you this. I said, at the, I said at the beginning that I was going to tell you my stance. I think he's interesting. I think, and I appreciate some of his, I like that he has a backbone. I like that a lot. People are like, well, he got arrested for heroin in the early 80s. And you know what? Tim Allen got arrested for being a drug dealer as well, but we made him Santa Claus. Um, I don't care what somebody did 40 years ago. People change. Just Kenny Chesney said that. Some people change. For me, he has a backbone. I don't know if I'm, I don't know if I'll actually do this, but I will consider registering for the primary as a dim just to be able to give him a vote and shake things up. I don't want him as president, but I don't mind that he's mixing it up and making people stop and think, where are you at? Let me know on RFK Jr. what you think. Let me know right down below. I'm Johnny B. reminding you it's okay to be white. It's okay to be straight. It's okay to be a Christian. And it's okay to be a man.